What's up, everybody? Welcome to Grow Through It with your host, me, Cure Age or Cure. I'm going to go ahead and let Emoji J into the box. And he's going to start off, start, I'm sorry, start us off with a little intro video. You ever get tired? Tired of feeling stuck? Tired of the pain? Of all the patterns that just keep leading to nowhere? Yeah, well, guess what? is how are we going to end all of that are we going to let life keep happening to us are we going to embrace for life to happen for us we all got to make that choice Thank you, Emoji J. Everybody, welcome again to Grow Through It, episode number five. Um, tonight we have two new guests. Um, we have Life, and then we also have Real Girl. Um, both are new, but really good friends of mine here on the app. Um, but a little bit about the show is on Grow Through It. Each week we have two different guests come in and we talk about different struggles, different adversities that we have not only been through, but how we grew through them, how we grew to be the people we are today, whatever steps we took, whatever moments we had where we were just so sick and tired of basically being sick and tired. And I'm sure we can all relate to that. Um, so that is a little bit about the show and a little bit about myself and my story is growing up, I was always involved in sports, but since I could pretty much walk, I started training martial arts. And that was something that was introduced by my father and my uncle. So as I got older, became a teenager, <coughs> excuse me, I noticed how big the UFC started to get, right? And I realized that's, that's what I want to do. So that became my job, training three times a day, two, three times a day, about five to six days a week. And um, I started competing. I started fighting. And then one day <laughs> I woke up preparing for a fight about mm, just a few weeks out of the fight, before the fight, woke up and I couldn't walk. And I found that I had um, a severe injury in my sciatic nerve due to overtraining and not taking care of my body properly. So with that, it was basically the end of my career. Um, I was able to eventually walk. I did rehab. I did things like that. Um, but one thing is that I couldn't stay away from martial arts. I couldn't stay away from the gyms. So I would find myself hanging out with the coaches, right? I would be back at these gyms, but I would just be, you know, for a while I was in crutches and I would be hanging, you know, on the sideline, basically, so to speak. And um, <laughs> it was hard. Like, it was definitely hard because it's like, I want to be doing that. I, that was me just like, you know, a few months ago, this, this and that. But instead of being sour and bitter about it, I started getting people coming up to me and, you know, checking on me and then s starting to ask for advice. And I'm like, it's interesting because like not too many people asked for my advice when I was in there but i guess i was just so busy focusing on me and my next fight and my next tournament whatever it was that they didn't have a chance to and so they started opening up to me now that i was more available so to speak <laughs> and i was kind of flattered so instead of like pushing them away and be like ah, i don't know man like you know using that injury because yeah i did go through a lot of depression and anxiety and all this stuff was 
pretty harsh for a little while, but hanging out at the gym was kind of like my uh, escape. You know, I needed that. That made me feel better. And when people started asking for my advice, I started helping them. And I started showing them things that I used to do, that I would do in that circumstance, that situation, whatever it may be. And I started seeing them succeed. And I was like, whoa, life changing. I think I just found my new calling. <laughs> Coaching was actually more fulfilling to me than actually being a fighter. And that's kind of an example of how we grow through adversity in here. So before I introduce my guests, my first guest, which is life, um, that's basically what happens here on Grow Through It. Um, so, you know, there's, there's something that you can always ask yourself, right? This is what I always ask myself. How can I either go through this situation or how can I grow from this situation, right? Because there's two ways. It's, and it's up to us in the end which one we're going to pick. So... Again, everybody, welcome to Grow Through It with Pure Age. Um, and again, thank you for all the gifts ahead of time, all the love, everybody coming in. I promise I'm not ignoring anybody. I'm just uh, respecting the guests and um, life. When you get here, please request the, po the box. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I promise I'm not ignoring anybody. I'm just um, respecting the guests, focusing on the stories, and I appreciate all the love. So. With that being said, um, Mr. Life, would you please request the box, my brother? Thank you, thank you, thank you, everybody. Are we having a little difficulties here? I'm using this new stand, by the way. It's a little wobbly. So, I gotta hold it still. Let me, uh, let me fix your screen a little bit, my brother. What's up? What's good, bro? Wasn't How are you? Ready? I was washing my hands, getting my phone situated. So, uh, all good, man. All good. Bear with me. We're here to have fun. We're here to tell stories. We're here to enjoy <clears throat> right. ourselves. We're here to learn. And we're here to grow. What's up? So, what's up? What's up? Everybody, this is uh, Life. If you have not favorited him already, please do. He is on his 12th day of streaming. Um, and he's killing it. You just hit your 500K earlier tonight, correct? Yeah, shout out to all the support. Leanna took my 500K today. Congrats. Congrats, bro. That's that's huge. That is huge. Like, um, So... What kind of I know that you've been a gifter for a while. What kind of got you to start streaming? If you don't mind me asking, I was in an auction. I was in, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, let me get some water. Yeah, same water break, real quick. Two seconds. <laughs> um, I had streamed a couple times just to check it out. Um, my content was pretty lame, it's like consisted of me just walking outside and, um, what really got me deciding to stream was I was in an auction um, and it was Shaquille Oatmeal. I filled in like kind of last minute and I wasn't going to do it and uh, I, I did it anyways and that Jenny ended up showing up and dropping a big old uh, top badge jet on me and um, <laughs> it was just a, it was a great moment right. and it got me thinking about like what I would do for a stream idea and then I just kind of got hooked on my idea and um, <clears throat> it brings me to today now I'm on a mission and I'm just I, I'm enjoying every minute of it I'm enjoying meeting all the people and yeah. uh, establishing real connections with people and you know it's just been it's been really amazing I've been I've been really fortunate a lot of people have been warning me about all the trolls but I feel like so far, we've been doing pretty good. Like, we've been meeting a really uh, good, a lot of solid people. And uh, I think that's been my blessing so far. Yeah. So we'll get into what, what kind of streams you're doing and what the, um, the mission is in your streams in a little bit. So to start off, like, I know we talked a little bit before the show. <laughs> and um, 
obviously we've all faced a lot of different adversities, but there was one in particular that you wanted to go with. And that was something similar that we had last week with Daniel. And that was also you served um, in the military as well for what was it, five years, correct? Yep, five years active duty in the Marine Corps. So that obviously, you know, had some crazy ups and downs for you, I can only imagine. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. When I, I like, um, I first got introduced to the uh, to the military. The army was doing recruiting. They were coming to my high school, mm -hmm. and um, I was 17 at the time. And in order to join the military, if you're under the age of 18, you have to have your parent or guardian sign off. And I was living with my father at the time. My father quickly signed the paperwork, and I went to go see my mother, and she wouldn't she wouldn't sign it. She refused. So uh, look, I didn't join the army. We'll just say I didn't join the army. Fast forward a couple years later, and um, I went through, my house had caught fire, and uh, I was going through a tough time. I was uh, <coughs> bouncing around, like couch surfing, trying to find a job and get some stability, and uh, stumbled across the Marine Corps, and just went full force, you know, joined. Did five years active duty and it like completely changed my life completely. So, what were some uh, some good takeaways that you got from that? Like, did it make you any kind of different from when it was like, hard? Before? I think it was, it was hard. It was like I mean, <laughs> it was so challenging, and, and I think what it really did was just show me my capabilities. You know, like just show me that I was capable of doing you know so much more than I probably thought I was capable of. Do you feel like it, uh, were you one of those kids growing up that was kind of like, you know, thought you were like the coolest guy there and then all of a sudden you get into the Marines and you're like, okay, never mind. <laughs> this is going to humble me a little bit. <laughs> nah, um, I was kind of like, I was kind of like a, growing up, I was kind of poor. I was a smaller sized kid and uh, so I, you know, I was more of like, I got picked on a lot probably. And that was kind of like motivation to kind of like be better, right? Like it kind of yeah. just elevated me. It just kind of like, I just took that negative that was coming at me and just kind of redirected it to make me stand out better, you know? And now I look yeah, back at a lot of my peers back then that were like the bullies and they're like, you know, still still up to the same old, no good, not doing, you know? So past. everything kind of like went full full circle for me. Yeah, so like it worked on your benefit basically. Absolutely. <clears throat> so like was there anything or I mean I guess there's a, probably a lot of things that you experienced that you know like did it did you have any like cuz I know last week when we spoke with Daniel he he had some PTSD that he still is growing through at this to this day and um was that something that you can relate with as well? Yeah, That's absolutely. Something. Absolutely. Yeah, um the military training itself is tough. So people think like you can only get PTSD from like war and combat or things like that. But <clears throat> the training itself creates traumatic, um, like it just it changes the way you look at things. It makes you, it makes you like, uh, there was a, there was a definitely a time in my life that I was scared that I was capable of killing somebody. Like, you know, I was scared because I was trained to do that. You know, like the military yeah, kind of turns that that on for you, you know. And so, you know, it's, I don't know, I guess uh, I had that moment in my life where I had to, I knew I had to change my mindset and my ways. I had to change, I had to break down what they had built up because I was no longer living, you know, living that. I was no longer a Marine, you know, I'm a civilian now. Right. And that's like the hardest thing is integrating back to being a civilian after you've been like serving for so long. Yeah, it's five hard years to transition time. back to be a civilian. It's like it's a lot easier to make someone into a machine than it is to make them back human. You know? Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Like, so I mean, five years is a long time. So I mean, like when you came back, what were some things that like what were, what would you say was the uh, like the turning point like first like the mm -hmm. hardest thing that like was going on that you kind of like kept like almost like a, i guess a trigger you could yeah say. I, and then something that like 
got you to a point where like, you know, they call it the aha moment where you're like, you, you know what, like I need to, I need to change this now. I need to. There's, there's probably like two things that were the hardest thing. Um, one thing is the bonds, like not having the bonds in the military coming back and just not having that closeness, that close knit family It's hard to overcome that. Like, I don't know. It's hard to explain. It's like having, I don't know. It's like being with a lot of people that are real close and then being separated and not having that anymore. So that's so like, feel like an outsider. Definitely. It's hard to find people okay. to, that can relate as a veteran. Right. So like what we go through, um, it's that's, I think that's why veterans can <clears throat> like, we, we, we gravitate to each other to support each other. Yeah. Cause we can all like, you know, understand we can look at the other guy and see him in pain, see him suffering. Right, and you know that type of pain. You 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 can recognize it. So yeah, not always. Some guys are better at hiding it. Some guys are really <laughs> oh bad yeah, at I bet. It, you know, because they kind of train us to be tough. Like you know, as a marine, you know, you, you don't you can't be. You just gotta stay to the mission. There's nothing that can get in the way of the mission. Right. You know? So you can't be. There's no getting sick. There's no, you know, suck it up all day, every day, you know, put, pull up your pants. So there's like no time for like sorrow and sadness. And we're all humans, you know, and at the end of the day, we're all humans. And when you de deprive people of that for long enough, you know, it changes people. I don't know. It's just so when, when you, when you came back, basically you, you felt like you were almost like less human, more like a machine in a way. And that didn't really fit in when you would try to, you know, get together with friends and just people that you knew that didn't go on that same journey that you did. So it kind of made you feel like that outsider, basically, is what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, for sure. For sure. So as that being like one of the hardest things, like how, what happened? Was there something that happened or was it just kind of a decision you made one day that you were like, you know what, I, I want to feel again. You know, I want to be able to feel you know what it's it like a long to, time. i want to feel it took human again time. it took a lot of therapy i was in counseling for years and a lot of it was running from diagnosis i didn't i was scared of being diagnosed with ptsd because i didn't want all the stigma that came with it because there's a lot of like negative stigma that comes with it i think a lot of guys they run from that they don't want to they don't want to get properly diagnosed because no one wants to hear that you got like a problem you know what i mean of course yeah absolutely it's human nature <laughs> Yeah, so that was the biggest thing was accepting that I had a PTSD problem and that I was struggling with something was like the biggest the biggest thing. And then seeking therapy was an active process. Like I had to actually work towards it. It's taken a lot of work to get to where I am today. So like the man you see today is like it took a lot of work to be here and do, you know, like to, to transition my whole life has been a lot of work. Yeah, which is good. You know, work work makes, I mean, and I talk about it every episode too. It's like if we're not learning, we're not growing, we're not doing something to better ourselves every day, what are we doing? You know, yeah. you know and then like, I'm sure like I told Daniel the same thing in, you know, in any military, Marine, Navy, Army, um, even with me and, and I, may, I, I wasn't actually able to join the military. I wanted to, my dad did um, when I was younger and um but because of my disability with Tourette's, they wouldn't take me. I wanted to join the Marines with one of my, I call him my brother, but like, cause we lived together for a long time. But one of my good friends, um, who's now a lawyer, <laughs> um, but yeah, he, you know, we wanted to join together, but they wouldn't let me. So I just, why well, I just kind of stuck to the at UFC route, which did not end up in my favor anyways, but regardless, um, even in MMA, you know, that you're taught to just, you know, be a certain way and, and it, and it can, it can, you know, teach you like, for one example, you know, like you were saying, or what we were talking about, like, if you, if you, you know, you stand still, you hold your breath, like what happens, you die, right? Like, it's just simple as that. So then like, if you transform it into, you're not learning, you're not growing, you're not moving, you're not trying to be a little bit better each day. It's almost like we're almost dying in a sense, you know, not, not yeah. literally, but metaphorically. Metaphoric. Another thing that was hard to overcome is um, I was a sergeant in the Marine Corps, and when you have rank and you, and you earn that rank, it comes with like a certain level of respect. And I had been operating in the Marine Corps as a sergeant, uh, you know, 
walking around getting that respect. And then when I got separated from the military and now I don't wear that rank anymore, people just kind of treat you like shit. It was a real, was a real humbling thing Language. experience. It was, it, was, it was very humbling to, okay. like, to have people have no respect for me for the sacrifices that I made and that, that I knew that I made. And so right. it was kind of like, yeah, it was- You uh, worked hard and they didn't recognize it now because you're it not- It didn't mean nothing to them. It didn't mean nothing to them. Right, and, right. And that was like, that was a humbling experience. Yeah, I can imagine because, you know, you put in all this work and, and then five years later, or probably more because with boot camp and everything like that, it's training, all that. more for other guys who do 20 years, like <laughs> these guys yeah. committed 20 years of their lives and went to war and, you know, done such amazing things. And they, they had commanded respect that they earned through their hard work of their service. And then they get out and then they have these, you know, for back, lack of a better word, punks or disrespectful people. It's right. like, if you only knew the things that I've accomplished as a man, you would never speak to me like this, right. you know? And so it's a humbling experience, but it's all- I think we can all agree that, you know, respect in general today mm -hmm. has, is just not a quality too many people have anymore. You know, like they used mm -hmm. to back, I don't know, 100 years ago, 50 years ago, whatever it may be, even 20 years ago, 30 years ago. But, um. I know that you did also mention something about your your kids. I know that that was something that, um, how did that come about? Like, I know you said your kids definitely were a big part of your growth. Yeah, um, because after I got out of the military, I lost purpose because when I was in the military, like, <clears throat> um, you know, I was doing stuff and I was doing missions. I was doing things that made a difference for the world. I was, you know, at least it felt like it. it felt like I was serving like a bigger purpose, bigger than me. Then when I got out, I had like no, no purpose. I was doing like no, nothing against landscapers, but in the, the scheme of what I was doing to go to be a landscaper was like, you know, it was like a huge, you know, degrade, you know? So. Right. It felt degrading for you. Because I was an aircraft mechanic. I was a, in charge of a work center, you know, working on multi-million dollar aircrafts. And then I cut out and like, I can't even get a job, you know, doing mu much. There was not much to transition. So right. it's just hard. It's hard. And like the qual the qualifications, a lot of them don't transfer. So a lot of guys do five years, they do a job, but then they come to be a civilian and it doesn't mean anything. It doesn't even transfer over. Right. It's not as fulfilling. <clears throat> So this, Everybody, this I want to thank you guys for all coming to grow through it. My name is Cure or Cure Age, and this is Life. Please hit him with a favor if you haven't already. I appreciate um, everybody. Sorry if I'm, this is tough for me to kind of say in front of a lot of people. I'm really being, I'm trying to be really honest about some really. Bro, you're, you're doing great. No need to apologize at all. You're doing great. Yeah. Um, but yeah, he's a new streamer. Today was his 12th day. Of streaming and he just hit his 500k milestone like so my hands are shaking right now that. like crazy you're so. good brother you're good everything's good everything's chill we're chilling we're just talking you and me um so your kids came into play how long after you got out of the military um uh my first daughter i can't even remember i can't even remember my kid's birthday right now because i'm all flustered but um it's all right it's all right um, how do you remember how you met um, their their mom? Yeah, I met their mom like a long time ago, and um, yeah, we met as like childhood. We met as like childhood kids, but we were just friends, and then we right. like separated, and then reconnected. Had like a long term distance for a while. Separated when I went to Afghanistan, and then after I came back home, like yeah. It was like always back and forth. Like we broke up so many times, but my kids, my kids gave me purpose. I was telling you about how I kind of lost purpose. Right, exactly. And like my kids, once my kids, it was like when I first had my first daughter, it was <clears throat> the first time I loved anything more than myself. Like up, in, up until that, I had lived a life where like, you know, I don't know. I just, it was rough, you know, to, for lack of a better word. So, yeah, like, for me, and it was just an amazing transformation, like, and 
it changed a lot for me. It, it started the transformation of me being a, like a mature adult and to get me to where I'm at. Today, <clears throat> one thing I explain is like, I think the world forms all of us through like our experiences, right? But we're all born like innocent in our natural creation, right? And that's where I'm trying to return to. So I'm trying to get, I'm trying to break down the barriers that the world put in front of me. And I want to get back to being that natural, innocent, you know, person that I'm, I'm meant to be, you know? Right. And, you know, so you would say basically you're still growing through it. Absolutely. You know, Every day. Every which day. is great because that's what the show's for, right? I mean, we're growing through it. And um, it's going to be a thing for the rest of my life. My PTSD is lifelong. There's no cure for it. It doesn't get better. <clears throat> I guess that you get the only thing is you get to start uh, realizing um, you learn yourself. It's all about learning about yourself, really. And you yeah. notice when you start feeling certain ways, you start questioning your feelings. And really, the diagnosis of my PTSD has made me change my life in so many other areas, not just the PTSD areas. Like, it's opened, it's opened, like, you know, helped me understand a lot of things about myself and come to terms, like, through that therapy of understanding the, the military damage, I've done a lot of, like, self, self work, <clears throat> you know? Right. So what, what's something that you feel comfortable sharing with the audience that you do to this day that helps you i know um every sunday you have a little bit of a ritual and that kind of that's kind of been something that's semi-new in your life yeah, right church church fellowship um you know being with people that you trust and love establishing bonds is the most important thing for me well, like there was, a long, there was a long time that i like i would like just lock myself in a room and just not want to be around nobody and it was just like a tough dark point in my life so yeah the, I definitely now spend a lot of my time giving back to the community and you know loving my neighbor and taking care of my you know people around me doing nice things like being human basically <laughs> yeah as much as possible absolutely and that's that's great because you know like you're you're it may not even feel like this but you're succeeding to becoming back to human after all that yeah. time of, you know, turning into a machine for, you know, pur different purposes for the country. So like and this now streaming does the same thing that therapy did for me. So like maybe some people have a uh, therapist is very important. And my therapist is like my person. It's my person that I can go to and say everything that I'm feeling without feeling biased or judged, right? And I feel like streaming can also kind of bring this element for you, right? So Absolutely. my person just, when I talk to my person, it's literally me just saying something so I can hear it for myself. It's just like speaking my feelings and what I'm saying out loud so I can kind of like understand it better you know, like with some feedback. And I think like that's what this stream is also doing for me. This is like very therapeutic for me. Like being That's able to great. talk to people, being able to like do some soul search and find myself, you know, and then be comfortable by myself is a big part of like finding out who you are, displaying who you are, and then people appreciating you for who you are. It's like reassuring that like you're not that person that people thought you were. You, this is who you are, you know, this is who you're meant to be. Facts, absolutely. Yeah. Again, everybody who's just joined or has joined, thank you for coming in. This is Grow Through It. My name is Cure or Cure Age. This is Life. Please hit him with a favorite if you haven't already. We have our show every week, Tuesday, midnight. Technically, on the rest of the U.S., it is Monday still here um, at 9 p.m. Pacific. Um, and again, thank you for all the love and all the great comments and just everything that you guys have been doing. I can't acknowledge everybody just out of respect for the guests. Um, but again, life, brother, thank you for sharing, you know, the story of your growth and how much it's impacted. But stick around, everybody stick around. Um, as life I just got one quick shout out. Yeah, go ahead. I'm gonna have you come just back. Want to shout the out too. real quick to Top Badge That Jenny. She's pretty much the one that got me streaming. <clears throat> and so I really she, appreciate she's, she's your she's, she's your meet me therapist. Yeah. <laughs> There you go. 
All right, and brother, shout out to all my other people that are in here. I see you. I didn't forget you or nothing. Yeah, absolutely. We don't. We didn't forget any of you guys, and we uh, we appreciate all the love. Absolutely. Um, and again, this is growth through it with your host, me, Cure Age. I also go by Cure. Um, I love the certain things that he was saying today because it really correlates with the quote every week i like to do a little quote that um kind of resonates with people's stories that they're sharing and um this one i think is really important so life if you please stick around brother i'm gonna have you and our next guest real girl she'll be hopping in the box pretty soon here in a moment <clears throat> um, i'm gonna have you both hop in the box and we're gonna do some takeaways and things like that with the audience and whatnot but real quick, so this is a little quote from Friday, September 9th. I have a whole little calendar. Um, it says, why would you spend a lifetime looking for confidence or passion or love to be human when these expressions and feelings already exist deep within you? It goes a little bit more in depth, but I think just that itself is very good. Um, if you want, I will read it one more time. Why would you spend a lifetime looking for confidence or passion or love or being human when these expressions and feelings already exist, exist deep within you? Um, so that's definitely very interesting because, you know, we were just talking about, or he was just, sorry, life was just talking about how he was trained into becoming a machine. And I know I may not have served in the military. Like I said, they wouldn't take me, unfortunately, but everything happens for a reason right life happens for us not to us so but with that regardless you know i being in <clears throat> in mma you know preparing to have a career in the ufc that was my job like i was saying before and that being my job required me to kind of do what life was taught to do right <clears throat> to numb myself down to not so much feel certain types of pain to feel basically nothing sometimes especially when you're in that ring or in that cage it's like the rest of the lights go off these stream lights over here my ring light off the only thing i got right is right in front of me and that's i feel like that's very similar to military training i mean correct me if i'm wrong life but so it's interesting, you know, we are trained and we train ourselves in a sense too, to become these like quote unquote machines. And we kind of forget that we're human, that it's okay to feel things, you know? And the reason why is because not trying to compare, you know, being in a sport to actual real life situations, but you guys kind of get what I'm saying. So with that, it's just, you know, I, I don't know how, I just kind of go with what I feel is right each week. And that quote is so perfect. So whoever hasn't, who, whoever just joined, didn't catch that, I will read it again. And again, thank you for coming to grow through it every week at Tuesday, midnight, um, Eastern time, 9 p.m. Pacific time. Um, and I'll read the quote one more time. Real girl, if you're in here, could you please request the box? And I will get you in here as soon as we can. <clears throat> So the quote again is, why would you spend a lifetime looking for confidence or passion or love or being human when these expressions and feelings already exist deep within you? So that's this week's kind of quote. I feel like it relates a lot to, I think all of us, especially with that story being told. And again, everybody, thank you for all the love. I, um, I greatly appreciate it. I, um, Doing my best not to acknowledge everybody, <laughs> but everyone, thank you so much. And um, please welcome Real Girl. If you haven't favorited it already, she's awesome. She has yeah. very chill and fun streams. <laughs> so definitely hit her with the favorite if you haven't already. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good, <laughs> good. Just uh, enjoying the show. <laughs> welcome to the show. This is your first time. Yeah, it's I actually just got in here. This is the first time I've seen your hair down. Oh my gosh, my hair. I've only worn my hair up like the last couple of times. I've <coughs> actually always wore it down, but I also haven't streamed that much lately. 
this is like true true i i just feel like the the last few streams you've had it you know all the way tied back and you had a little trick thing. that is true but it's very different so real quick i like to pick up on people's names because everyone's names have a certain reason i didn't get to life's but yours is real r-e-e-l mm -hmm. um and I, you believe you did tell me about that but for all the people in the audience who don't know about it what does that mean um, well, I teach Irish dance actually was a competitive Irish dancer for over 20 years and now I teach and the reel is something that the kids do. It's one of their first dances. It's actually the first dance they ever learn as kids. And it's just so it's kind of like the fundamental basic dance. Yep. And so you're the real girl. <laughs> <laughs> Which is funny because I have to explain it all the time. So we're like, no, we know why you did that. Or you get the trolls that like to say the opposite. And I'm like, it's not even for that. So. <laughs> And how long have you been teaching? Um, I mean, I retired at 26. So like I retired like 18 years ago. So I've been teaching on and off that long. But I've only had oh, my wow. own school for a little bit less than a year. Okay, cool, cool. Yeah, that's, I love that. Because obviously I have Irish and Scottish background on my mom's side. Um, but so I don't know if you caught the first part of the episode. Um, with life in the box. I know you were um, dealing with some stuff at home. Hopefully everything went down well. But um, when we talked before the show, you had mentioned um, some relationship toxicity that you experienced in the past that thankfully you were able to get out of just in time and not, you know, because a lot of people and I've I've worked with a lot of clients and people that um, especially women who get in these relationships and end up stuck, you know, cause they're not sure they're scared. They're not sure what to do. They're not sure how to get out of it. Um, but you were able to like, just do what you had to do. Could you tell us a little bit about that? How that all kind of came luckily, to be? Luckily my mom lived close enough that I was able to, um, get out of the house and stay with her without having to like try and find a place while, you know, your mind's kind of blown in the situation itself, just having to, to pick up and leave. But my mom actually lives only about 45 minutes from me. So okay. I literally picked helpful. up and left and went to her house and then hired movers like a week later to go clean out the house. So I didn't even have to go back and forth a bunch of times myself, which I think was really helpful in being able to stick to my guns in that point and like stay gone. <coughs> Cause it took me four times to leave so four times um so why exactly four times was it just was it fear-based or was it just kind of like was it one of those things where like i know they will be better i know it will get better i think i just believed um the things that he was telling me that he was going to i guess work on for lack of a better way to put it each time that I went back until the last time, I feel like the circumstances I left under were just um, maybe a lot, a lot bigger, a lot more abusive at that point in time. And I, I don't know how, I mean, I know you don't want like super descriptive, but at that point in time, I basically told him I needed to, um, things needed to either stop like with at that point in time, like that we were having our argument, wherever was going on, or I was going to um, call authorities to cost step in and that is what I had to do so wow so that was the last time mm -hmm. so yeah. yeah it came down to that basically it did and so when you guys met was it always like that or was it just something that kind of escalated as time came or were there like the red you know a lot of us don't recognize those red flags right away and then uh, for sure we're like oh I'd say for the, probably for the first like six to eight months, there were probably minor red flags in terms of him being just like a really strong personality. But okay. um, as, as time progressed and I actually moved into, you know, a whole <coughs> with him, which we did after about a year of knowing each other, um, was when I feel like he decided at that point then it was kind of <clears throat> more live by his rules because I was under thumb all the time. So then rules started being made about, you know, 
where I could go, what I could do, things like that. And at that point in time, it was like, I, I started, you know, to fight back to keep my own like identity in this situation. But as I felt like I lost more and more and more of myself. And I think what was most helpful is people were recognizing that I was losing more of myself. (laughs) people that I didn't even know that well that's yeah and that's when it's like a big sign when other people are seeing it (laughs) um and that's interesting because you know with life and his situation you know it was obviously like he was that was kind of what they meant to do was to make Mm -hmm. him less like him and more like what they needed him to be where Mm -hmm. in your situation it was more like he just I mean it's kind of similar I mean he wanted you to be how he wanted you to be not how you really were and I know that there are, there are definitely a lot of people, I'm sure even just in this audience alone right now in the stream, that can relate to being stuck in relationships. And I, I how long were you guys together? I think you told me. Uh, about three years. About three years. So yeah, I mean, three years, you know, then there's people that are even several months or people that are like 10 years. And it's just like, the longer you're in it right the more you feel the harder it is to get out of it because i guess i guess like with your case it was a lot of influence right or a lot of false promises yeah i was um so i could because you know nobody's bad well, i can say nobody's bad all the time but i feel like i really had to start weighing <clears throat> the good over the bad because his good was very good but his bad was <laughs> Yeah, I know that sounds like really cliche, but um, it was easy to, you know, for a certain period of time to forget the bad when he would do things that were so good. Um, even things with like helping right. my mom or my family. He was just, I don't know. He was able to be really completely two different people, which made it really difficult for me to separate the good from the bad and have to really sit down and take a hard look at the bad and what was actually like hurting me not just emotionally, but had the potential to like hurt my life, basically. So would you say that like aha moment or that point of I'm just sick and tired of this was when people started noticing it, like you changing from the relationship or was it more something that you look like more like a reflection type of situation? So I can actually tell you two like specific things that were, that happened within 24 hours. I had called my dad upset and my dad was like, listen, you're in your thirties. I can't tell you what to do. But he's like, all I can tell you is I didn't raise you to to be treated like this or to believe that it's okay to be treated like this. So like I took that in and then the next day, my best friend had actually had me start talking to her husband because her husband was a little bit like, tougher on me in terms of that like my best friend would always just support me whereas her husband would support me but say you know this isn't right like I'm a guy and I'm telling you like this isn't okay that kind of thing and he I called him like really upset from work because something had happened you know on the phone on my lunch or whatever with my boyfriend at the time and he was like you're gonna go in the bathroom you're gonna wash your face and this is gonna be it he's like we're not gonna talk about it again but it was like, he knew I just needed to hear that. I feel like, because he knew I already knew that I needed yeah. to get out, but I needed, they were like probably the two most influential like men and strongest people in my life at that point in time. So for them to just be like, this isn't you and this isn't going to happen. You're not going to let this happen to yourself anymore. So, right. so is that, that little bit of soft mixed with tough love for you? <laughs> I don't know how soft, so, there was a lot of softness in it. I'm making it sound soft right now. <laughs> Conversation's well, I mean, hard don't, that nice, but. <laughs> don't, yeah, you don't have to, um, you know, soften it up too much here. But um, again, it's all about comfort. And also everybody who has come in since Real Girl's been here, please hit her with the favorite. This okay. is Grow Through It. And I am the host, Cure or Cure Age where we sit here and we enjoy ourselves. I'm just kidding. We come in and each week on Tuesdays at midnight Eastern, 9 p.m. Pacific, we have two guests every week. And each guest talks a little bit about one of their stories of adversity or some kind of struggle that they've been through. And not just how they went through it, but how they grew through and from it and into the people they are today. Um, So, which leads me to, you know, my next question. Um, 
you got to that point where you washed your face, you were no longer allowed to talk about it, right? <clears throat> and then what was the next step? I mean, you, you, I know the whole situation with the authorities being called happened and everything like that. And having your mom close by made it a lot easier for you to just, you know, I'm, I'm out of here for good this time. But what kept you, if you don't mind sharing with the audience, what kept you from getting sucked back in that fourth time after that fourth time? I just, I don't, I don't know if I can even truly describe it. I feel like it was just something that I knew. Like, I felt like at that point I knew like myself that I just couldn't do it. Like, yeah, of course I had my nights where I would like go to sleep alone and say, is this really better? And I would have to sit there and think really hard and tell like, it's not easy. I had to tell myself that this isn't physically, this isn't really what I want right now. Part of me wanted to still be with him, but I had to remember like the feelings of anxiety driving home from work, like what I was going to walk into, whether he was going to be happy or unhappy with me that day. And I actually kind of like made myself a list in like a really, really tiny notebook so that it wasn't like I couldn't write a million things in it or whatever, but it was literally like this little tiny notebook going this big. And I'd write myself like five or six things that I had to remember was not something that I was ever willing to go through again. And if I was going to step back into that situation, they were all things I was going to continue to go through. Absolutely. You, you felt your self-worth basically, Mm -hmm. which kind of goes back to that quote, you know, why would you spend a lifetime looking for confidence and all that, et cetera, et cetera, when it's already in there, you know, it exists. And I think we started talking about this on the call before the show, about how a lot of times we get stuck in situations, friendships, relationships, even relationships with our family members because of familiarity. And that's part of our, you know, comfort or our complacency that we have, which is, you know, it is fine. It's, you know, we're, we're only human at the end of the day, right? Like we all have it at certain times. We all have sometimes more, sometimes less, doesn't matter. But basically, like in the situation, it almost sounds like like when you said there were times where you wanted to, you know, go back and be with him because obviously after three years, it was familiar to you, right? Yeah. And, you know, with familiarity, the thing is, it's like it all has, I feel like, you know, and it has to do, at least for me, a lot of it is growing up, right? You know, it depends on how we grow up. I know some people grow up and maybe their family is very dramatic and there's a lot of drama that happens. So we tend to attract that or we tend to attract those types of people in our lives, friendships, relationships, doesn't matter. And so that's because that's what we're familiar with. And so eventually when we realize we don't want to be in that anymore, we got to realize that sacrifice uh, sacrifices, whether it's cutting out certain relatives out of our lives, um, leaving after four times, you know, on that four try fourth, was it, um, four times a charm for you is four times. Well, four times. So, but you know what? Sometimes people don't, sometimes people are still there, you know? And so I hope that you're proud of yourself. I know it's been a while since that happened, but like you should be. Because I think everyone in here can agree that we're all proud of you for being able to walk away from a toxic and not unhealthy relationship, you know, and it's not easy. That's well, that's where the proudness comes from, right? Where the pride comes from because, like sure. I said, familiarity. As much as you wanted to go back, you conquered that feeling of not actually going back and sticking to your self-worth basically so that is definitely commendable (laughs) because like i said earlier you know a lot of people i feel like in general or just even in this stream can relate to that situation that you were in and so going forward from there um where did you kind of feel that moment because i know like obviously afterwards there were some times like i'm sure you missed him naturally 
Um, I'm sure you miss certain things, the good times, like you said, he was really good. And when he was, and he was really bad when he was not, but um, how were you able to kind of get yourself to grow through it, <laughs> so to speak? <laughs> Um, Were there, was there a certain aha moment or was it just kind of time heal? So I actually ended up having, like having to see him a few different times after that, because we did, I mean, our whole lives were together. Things were financially together. So through having to separate some things, I had agreed to attempt to have like some form of friendship with him because he had children and I had raised those children <coughs> with him for two years as well. I mean, they did have their mom, but they were with us for part of the time too. And, um, so, you know, tried to be friendly out of the situation, which is probably not the best idea, but, you know, I have a heart. So I, I was definitely sat on, I knew I could not be with him. He believed that I wouldn't do that. Who knows, well, who knows what he believed, but, um, and there was a time that I was supposed to go there to, I don't really, I help him watch the kids or something. I couldn't, I don't even remember why I was supposed to go there, but I had started a medication that was, I wasn't feeling well and I didn't want to drink drive on it but I was still like okay to go help him with what I agreed to and I called him you're gonna have to come get me because I'm not driving and he was like oh if you don't come here then we don't we don't even need to be friends or anything and I was like so you want me to drive not feeling well okay I said well if uh you can't be there when I'm at my worst I will not be anything to you at my best and that is literally the last words I ever spoke to him Say it a little louder for the people in the back. <laughs> <laughs> I said, if you can't be there for me at my worst, which wasn't really my worst, but I won't be there for you at my best. There you go. For and everyone I'm not that was really in the back, those are lurking literally the last words I ever spoke to him. <laughs> wow. I bet that was like a feeling of like 800 pounds off your shoulders. Yeah. And, That's you know, now just like, 800 pounds of just strength inside yeah. of your heart <laughs> after that I can only imagine I wish I was able to say some certain things to you know certain exes in the past just to kind of like get that feel good closure like you know like but that's cool I love that I feel that like the last you that opening though like I feel like sometimes you don't have like <laughs> everyone might have like an actual aha moment that something becomes that for them but I mean like, I feel like he made that very black and white like telling someone friend friendship relationship wise like they're telling you they don't feel safe to drive and it was like almost an hour you're gonna tell somebody to get in the car anyway we're not going to be friends anymore i feel like that's that's a pretty easy decision right there to say well then clearly yeah nothing positive that i thought about you is positive anymore it should be pretty easy to separate from a situation like that so. yeah it's like it kind of makes it like he gave you a an easier out <laughs> just by you know giving you the whole ultimatum thing um life Hopefully you're still in here, brother. Please uh, hit the guest box when you get a chance. We're going to have uh, you guys both be in the box at the same time. Um, but real quick, so do you feel like teaching and having your school, <clears throat> obviously you've only had your school for a year and this was all this happened before that. Was that something that helped you on the mend with everything? So I actually... Being on the girl is kind of like feeling that like you know like that uh, I don't want to say girl power but you know that feminine power that you were able to say those last words like you did and then you see these little you know these young women and little girls that you teach was that you know something that kind of helped yeah I mean I feel like it just being in, back involved with the dancing alone helped me I started back so I knew I couldn't add anything <laughs> else to my time while I was with him like it just wouldn't be allowed in that sense like right. my activities were go to work and take care of like the family. So I, as soon as I was out of that relationship, I had found a dance school in the area and started teaching with them. So I was teaching for, I, I've taught for about six years. I just have only had the school myself. So I was still in a situation of like empowering like children. We had girls and boys actually, um, but empowering children. And I did feel like I was, even though I always had confidence in dancing, I feel like I had more confidence just as a person going back into that and in that teaching situation. So I felt like maybe my guidance for them was a little bit better, even though I wasn't guiding them through those types of life situations. Um, right. You kind of, what you put off, they learn. So I feel like by me being just more confident in myself, probably just gave them maybe a better sense of confidence. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, 
you kind of it kind of reminded you you needed to be a certain person for them and that required you to be a certain person for yourself as well i love that that's cool i'll have to come out whenever if i ever come out there to that side i'm i'm going to definitely learn some real real dancing oh i can teach you online you don't have to wait for that <laughs> okay I'm, I'm down for that yo life welcome back brother yo vier everybody thank you again for coming to grow through it with your host me my name is cure age or cure um, these are my guests, Life and Real Girl. Please hit them with the favor if you haven't already. Life is a brand new streamer. Um, he's on. We need ten more to get to a thousand. <laughs> there you go. Thank you when you said you need a thousand before. Thank you very yeah. much. We we'll appreciate that. Five hundred, um, five hundred K. He just hit tonight. So in twelve days, that's pretty impressive. But um, so with your guys' stories, it's pretty interesting because the whole quote that I just happened to pick before the show really resonated again with well I feel like these quotes can resonate with everything right it's all about life not you life but life, life. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but also your story so it's like with life situation and, and how he grew from it and how he, what he went through you know he became a machine right and he kind of forgot how what it was to be human and that's where the quote kind of came in and said, you know, why spend a lifetime looking for confidence, passion, or love, or hum to be human when these expressions and feelings already exist deep within you. And for real girl, it was, you know, similar thing with that self-confidence and that, you know, self-worth feeling of being able to walk away from a situation that you know isn't good for you and, it, and you know it's not going anywhere. So did you, I know you guys heard each other's stories. Was there anything that you guys kind of found similar with from each other's stories? Certain things or maybe like, well, I know you didn't serve in the military real and, um, but life, I mean, maybe you've been in a pretty hard relationship that was hard to walk away from. Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know. You don't have to get into it, but uh, blank on this one. I think we all, I think, I think we all have been in that situation, right? We've all definitely had that moment or those times where, you know, we're in, we're, we know we're in this situation. We're getting told we're in this situation, like real got told. And, but we just, we have that hope and we have that kind of that vision of, this person is going to be this way at some point. So let's, let's see how it goes. Let's continue this and see if it gets anywhere. Right. Um, and then for life, obviously, you know, having to basically retrain his whole self by becoming, you know, human again and finding, you know, places and, and people that he can feel a part of. And so with, I feel like with real, that place of sense of feeling in a good way was your studio, right? Where you were teaching. And that was like a good way for you to heal. I mean, correct. You got to interrupt me when you want. I'm just, uh, just oh, no, I'm recapping just, over the show. I just, I mean, yeah, I mean, the dancing was definitely, that was something that I was set about not doing when I moved down here to begin with. And then once I got into that relationship, it was just something that I knew would have been a fight to try and, give away some of my time elsewhere. Like there was just, the control was, right. you know, kind of crazy where I was at. And I knew not even, there was not even a conversation that could have been had about doing it. So it was just the first, first real positive thing I entered into my life once mm -hmm. I removed the toxic, I guess, for lack of a better way to put it. Absolutely. Yeah, I know. And it's, it's wild. So for those of you guys have, that didn't get all the show, it just came in recently. Thank you for all the love again. And um, thank you for being on the show. This is episode five of Grow Through It with Cure Age. Um, my special guests tonight were Life and Real Girl. Please hit them with the favorite if you haven't already. Um, they both stream pretty consistently. They've been around the app for quite a while. And um, 
thank you guys again for sharing your stories. Is there anything that you guys want to let the audience know or maybe share about your streams? I know there is something Life wanted to say about his stream, um, but Real Girl, is there anything that, like some kind of takeaway from your growth experience that you want to share to maybe the ladies or even the fellas in the stream out here that I mean, could be I in a similar situation say, you were in? I mean, my biggest thing, if, I, if anybody asks me advice on anything, I say if, if anyone in your life is making you question anything about yourself, I mean, some people can do it in, you know, there might be something positive that somebody is bringing to you that you do need to question about yourself if you're, you know, doing something that might not be the right thing to do, but definitely take some time to reflect and really think about <coughs> the feelings that someone else is making you feel about yourself. If that makes sense, I might be really wordy, but before you just make a judgment on yourself that somebody else is right. Cause I feel like for a long right. time I was believing what other people thought of me and, and not standing strong on what I thought of myself. Exactly. Yeah. No, I, I agree with that. And you know what? We actually talked about that in um, a different episode with Drew. We talked a lot about how important it is to be able to spend time alone with yourself. Because that's when you really feel, and I don't want to say discover, because it's, I mean, you can discover it, but you kind of discover that part of you that you kind of forgot about. You know, it's like, not only when you're, when you're alone with, those thoughts in your mind, those feelings that you are, you know, we try to avoid. That's when we really know what's up in there. And then we no longer fear because a lot of us fear what's up in there, right? Like a lot of times we, we get afraid of what we're going to find if we spend too much time undistracted with our phones, with music, whatever movies. So it is important to just take time by yourself, you know, and, um, but going from there, life, Tell us a little bit about what you're doing right now with your streams. Um, each day is a, has been a different city these last 12 days. What day was today, city? Today what was Boise. Yeah, Boise, so Idaho. I would say um, I got two big dates coming up. If you're going to check me out, these are the most important times that I like to see. I stream every day at 8 a.m. or 8 p.m., but two big dates for me is going to be September the 25th, my morning stream, make sure you check that out at 8 a.m. I don't know what's going to be happening. Eastern. I'm going to be somewhere in the country doing amazing things. So that's all you got to know is that on Sunday, the 25th, at like 8, 9 in the morning, I'm going to be somewhere in the United States doing amazing things. Can I so share I have a question them? for you then. So are you just going different places and streaming? Is that like a big part of what you do? No. <coughs> so which do you want me to explain or do you want to? up to you i'll explain it okay <laughs> so pretty much on the first of the month we all chose different cities around the united states and then every day um the support that we generate uh the, <coughs> end of it, the city that gets the most support i'm gonna fly out to and and donate to the community one way or another so this month is, yeah, this month is like a church community. And so far, what we, which city are, is in the lead? Chicago. Right As of right now, I'm flying out to Chicago on the 24th. <coughs> I want to go to Chicago. I love Chicago. So, so. we've got a lot of days ahead of me. Um, if you want to follow the schedule, add me on IG. Everything I'm going to be doing in the future is going to be posted on IG. So if you want to follow me, and find out the upcoming things. I got big plans, a lot of things coming down the line. It's the best way to keep in touch is through the IG. Whoop. Real girl hopped out. Um, Thank you, Real Girl. Well, for Excuse all me. of you, I don't know, maybe she had a phone call. But for all of you, hit please hit fave for, uh, sorry, please hit the fave for life and for Real Girl. They were my guests tonight. Um, I'm on top now. Is that by accident? <laughs> <laughs> um, so basically, uh, what I was going to say too is, if if I may, real, um, I know that you talk a lot about in your streams when people, you know, genuinely need advice or some kind of help to feel free to reach out to you. Um, mm -hmm. Where's the best place that they can do that? Whether it is it on your stream or? Um, I would say just send a message to my IG. My IG link is on my profile. Okay, so you guys know where to find these people. 
I mean, they're um, welcome to come in my stream and talk about it too. I'll let anybody that's comfortable talking in like during yeah, the stream or during live. She doesn't really kick it, people. But... She does not kick anybody really. So come in there. Not that you guys wouldn't get kicked anyways, but come in Thank there. Thank you so much, George. Thank you for having me on your show. Sure. Really yeah. Yeah. Thank you guys. Thank you guys for being here. Support. I'm going to go ahead and Please. drop. Yeah, bro. Have a wonderful night. Appreciate you coming in and filling in last minute. That was great. Appreciate that absolutely, a lot. Absolutely. Absolutely. Appreciate you, brother. And uh, good luck with that mission. Hopefully, uh, hopefully you'll be coming to Vegas and not Chicago. We'll see. <laughs> but, How do um, we get real, that? Real... Uh, I think Vegas already passed, honestly. So, but um, real girl, thank you for being a guest tonight. Me. And um, sharing your story with everyone, I think a lot of people were able to resonate with that, you know, in that situation, because believe it or not, or admit it or not, we've all been there, I think, in my opinion. So, <clears throat> okay, New City is coming October 1st. All right, well, everybody, thank you again for coming to my show. This was episode five of Grow Through It with Cure Age, also go by Cure. Um, and here is where we share every Tuesday midnight on Eastern or Monday Pacific 9 p.m. Um, we share our adversities and not just what happened to us, but what happened for us. We like to reword it a little bit. Um, and yes, I did see everybody coming in and showing all the love and I can't thank you enough. Um, I'm sorry I did not be able to um acknowledge everybody but i did see everyone um i just you know for the show i want to be completely respectful to all the guests and everything um but thank you again to everybody and it looks like we're coming up close to that 3.5 so anyways i'm gonna go ahead and um end the stream i will be back on in about 30 minutes or so and thank you again we're you know we talk here and grow through it in this show about different adversities we face and how we grew through them and from them. So if you guys want to be uh, a guest on another episode, hit me up, you know, message me on Instagram. My Snapchat is also in my bio, you know, go ahead and feel free to send whatever you want and reach out. And I would love to have you on the show. So next week we do have, Next couple of weeks, we have some very interesting guests again, uh, like always, just like tonight. Um, so stay tuned for that. And um, I'm going to go ahead and hop off here and I'll be back in about 30 minutes. So everyone, thank you again so, so much. It means the world to me coming out here tonight and taking time out of your nights or your mornings, wherever you're at and being here. So and thank you again to the guests, Real Girl and Life. If you haven't, please go favorite them. They're in here somewhere. Find them, favorite them, and everyone, if I don't see you later tonight, have a good night and have a happy Tuesday tomorrow.